Okay, hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Victor, and we are running the CompTIA Security Plus 701 Certification Exam Preparation Guide. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, uh, don't forget to check out the awesome content we have across the platforms. Uh, we have content on networking, on web programming, on cybersecurity essentials, on Cisco Cybersecurity Operations Associates, on pen testing, quite a lot you have on the channel. So in this series, we started the series with a fundamental security concept. So in the CompTIA Security Plus certification exam, we're going to be going through 16 series. So we're done with four of them. So we have looked at fundamental security concepts, CIA, uh, confidentiality, authenticity, non-reputation, integrity, we looked at all of those basic concepts. We look at career paths also. We looked at the different areas uh, where people can play a role, whether it's going to be entry level, whether it's going to be SOC, whether it's going to be mid level, whether it's going to be management level. In threats, uh, module two, we looked at the different types of threats by threat actors, uh, the ones that come within your network, your IoT devices, your web applications, your systems. Then we looked at cryptographic solutions where we talked about the two different types of uh, uh, cryptography. Uh, in cryptography, actually we're looking at, looking at how do we uh, convert plain text to cipher text. And for the exam objectives, you want to be able to differentiate the different types of cryptography, the symmetric and asymmetric, and the different types of uh, algorithms uh, under each of those uh, solutions each of those algorithms and what kind of solutions that you can implement and that you want to protect uh, data at rest, data in transit or data in, uh, that is undergoing processing. Then in module four, we looked at how do we implement identity and access management? Very, very crucial aspect in cybersecurity because here we're looking at access control and access control plays a role in the trite that is confidentiality, integrity and availability. Because if you implement better access control systems, you can you can look at the identities that want to access the digital assets. You can actually verify them. You can authenticate them. You can grant them permission. And you can also, that is authorization. Then you can also keep a trail, like keep a log. If somebody access a website, how do you keep track of uh, what the person did and the rest? So if somebody access a network, what kind of permission are you granting the person? Then what are the different types of authentication you have in IAM? That is identity and access management. So we said you have you can have a first layer kind of security. You can have second layer. You can have third layer. That's where the concept of one-time password, one-time authentication, two-factor authentication comes in. Where you are saying, I don't want to verify somebody by just the person's password, what the person's know. You want the person to know. You want to verify also by... Uh, who the person is, or for instance, where the person is, the person's location, the person's IP. You take, for instance, where you are implementing an access control system in for a server or a network in a building or a URL, and you're saying that you only want people within your facility to be able to access it. It then means you're going to bind access of the facility IP address to that URL resource. So these are some of the concepts we've looked at in these models. And going forward, we're going to go to module five. So everybody, welcome to module five. So if you've enjoyed this series uh, up to this point in time, uh, you're ready to take your CompTIA Security Plus exam, reach out to us. We could help you prepare. We could add you to a study group where we look at uh, an Excel sheet that can help you uh, brainstorm, look at the curriculum, map it to the objectives, and see how to prepare very well for the exams. And most of our students that are prepared for the exams have ACE their exams. And if you also want to have mentorship, we have a cybersecurity internship program that you could run for between four and five months. You can also reach out to us. Don't forget to subscribe and inform others about this series. Okay, let's get down to business. Here, I want to look at how do we maintain enterprise campus network architecture. So this is the, the point that comes where you want to uh, brush up some of your networking skill sets, right? Uh, I will normally tell students that if you want to do security, you need to have some background in tech, 
And if you don't have a background in tech, you just need to take up a skill set in web programming. You could check the channel playlist. You'll see a complete, comprehensive series on um, web programming where we talked about software development lifecycle. We talked about the, the different aspects of web development for front end, back end. At least have an intermediate skill set with respect to web. Then network is another very good aspect. You want to have some busy skill setting. You want to understand what a network is, what are the different types of network. Like a campus network now is more or less an enterprise network. It's a large scale network. And to summarize, for those of us new into networking and you're trying to take the Security Plus exam or you're trying to do a brush up, a network is simply um, a situation where you have two or more devices connected to share resource, right? So anytime you connect two or more device and they're trying to share resource, and that resource not necessarily is going to be internet. That resource can be files. So that means that if two phones or if a phone and a laptop over Bluetooth shares files, that's a network. It can be a phone-to-phone -phone transferring data through Wi-Fi or through infrared or whatever. That's a network. So you call that a PAN, a personal area network. It's because it's small, just between two persons. And when you have a network set up, that is two or more devices, and they're trying to share a resource like hard disks, that is devices now, or printer, that's a network. So, or it can be, okay, they're trying to share the internet facility or one of the devices, that's a network. So a network is typically two or more devices coming together to share resources, and it can be anything. Now, that's a network. And the network is made up of three most important aspects. The very first important aspect are what you call the end devices. So the end devices are those items on your network that actually communicate with each other. If it's a building, you can have CCTV cameras, and that's where the concept of IoT comes in, Internet of Things, anything you could control over the internet. On the playlist, I have a series on IoT, right? I started a series on CCTV cameras, and this is very important for cybersecurity analysts because that is physical security. If you have the best, um, uh, infrastructure, but you don't have physical security to the infrastructure, <laughs> you are good as gone. So you have those end devices like your camera, like your phones, like your PC, like your printers, like your laptops, all of those things are your end devices. That's one aspect of your network. Another aspect of your network is what we call the intermediary devices. I'm trying to do a brush up here. An intermediary device. So what are your intermediary devices? So those are the guys that help the, the, the end devices to connect to each other. Things like your router, your switches, your access points, your all of those guys, they help the end devices to connect to each other. Then you have what we call the connecting media. Most of these concepts are also in the playlist on the channel where we have introduction to networking. So if you are new to networking, you can take up that complete playlist it's a little bit um, uh, uh, concise, right? You could go through it. It's going to help you prepare for the Security Plus certification. So you have connecting media, which is how do we connect? So it can be through infrared, it can be through Bluetooth, fiber optics, ethernet, all of the means through which you can connect is what you call the connecting media. So a network is two or more devices connecting to share resources, made up of three aspects, the end device, intermediary device, and connecting media. So that's a little brush up about networking. Okay, let's look at how do we maintain an enterprise campus network architecture. So here now for a network, we talk about the PAN, the one, and an enterprise network. So here for the exam objective, you want to be able to compare and contrast security implications on different uh, on-premise uh, network architecture. Now, the thing for a security analyst is that you're actually concerned about the way I structure my network, which is what you call the architecture. What are the implications, right? 
here you're also looking at what kind of security principles do you want to apply on your premise network? Then what kind of control do you want to actually implement to catch to secure a network? Now, for network engineers, that's most of the time is to set up the network. For security network engineers, there's there's is to make sure that whatever kind of architecture, what kind of whatever kind of framework that is set up is very, very well secured. And then you want to make sure that if you have remote access, if you have VPNs, if you have tunneling systems into that network from elsewhere, you want to make sure that it is secured. Okay. Let's get to business. So the very first thing is selection and placement. So how are you going to sort out your infrastructure? Your media, your plans, your addressing, that is your logical addressing. How do you do that? How do you forward packets from one section of the network to the other? Then what kind of application and services are you going to be running? How do you structure your data? How do you place them? Then what kind of workflows are you going to be having for people to be able to access that network? And if you have a mail server locally or if you have a file server locally, how do you structure that? Then... What is it going to be your network infrastructure like? Now, for those of us that are also not very conversant with networking, which I said, for instance, I will drop on the playlist. Or I will draw in the description of this video for you to go check out that. So we have what we call the OSI model, the Open System Interconnect. So this is a structure that helps two systems on the network, like I said earlier on, to communicate. So you have what we call the layer one, the layer two, the layer three, the layer four, the layer five, the layer six, the layer seven, the layer, yes, layer seven. <laughs> okay, so you have layer one to seven. So the very first layer is called the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer. Then you have the five and six, not mentioned here, those were skipped. So for a mnemonic, I, I love potatoes alone uh, a lot. So you can actually say, please do not take sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. So sweet is session. P is presentation. Then alone. So please do not take sweet potatoes alone. So those are the five players. For a security analyst, your interest is what do you have in the layers? Also, what are the components of the layers? Now, what are the protocols within the layers? Now, what is uh, the vulnerabilities you have in the layers? Then uh, what are the security countermeasures you have in the layers? So you want to take this note down, study that for exam preparation. Because for each of the layers, you want to know, okay, what do I have on my physical layer? Do I have all of those cables. I have the, the pods. I have some of the hardwares. What do I have in layer two? I have my, my switches. That's why I have MAC address. What do I have in my layer three? I have my routers. What do I have in layer four? That's where your transport layers. So this helps uh, uh, prepare this content for the next layer. What do I have? In the fifth layer, I have my session layer. That's where I manage interaction between uh, two connecting systems. What do I have in my presentation layer? So how do I deploy the content? Is it going to be through um, secure channel? Is it going to be on secure channel? Is it going to be through a uh, voice over IP? Is it going to be through um, a video? Is it going to be through images? How do I present that data? Then in application, this is where you have your, 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 your what's it called? your applications, right? Uh, that's where you have the softwares. So for your exam preparation, understanding the OSI model is very crucial, right? So switching infrastructure. So uh, what do you call switching? Switching is typically moving packets uh, from one point of your network to the other point of your network, right? So that's what switching is. And that's the responsibility of a switch. And here you see something that looks like router, this diagram here, you have something that looks like router layer three switch. So there are some switches, they are layer three devices. 
though you could see uh, that a switch is in layer two, but there's some switch that performs layer three functions and you call them layer three switches, right? So uh, in your topology, uh, you have different ways you could plan your network in terms of infrastructure. You can have a physical topology and you can have a logical topology. And anytime you talk about physical topology, you're referring to, okay, where am I going to place my switches? Where am I going to place my router? Things like room one, room two, room five, room 10, first floor, second floor. That's a physical topology. Whereas a logical topology is how do you do addressing? So what's the IP address? What's the MAC address, right? What's the gateway for this section of my network? So for your planning, that is very crucial. So you also have office, campus. How do you do your structured cabling? Then how do you structure your network in such a way that you have very good segmentation? Uh, segmentation? And what's segmentation? Segmentation, okay, this is a classic example of segmentation. You want to have like devices, like needs in terms of functionality to be within a range. You can say, okay, all of the marketing staff, they're going to be on an address. Uh, you can see all the, the C-level executives, like the chief executive officer, the chief med, uh, medical director, the chief technology officer, all of those kind of management level stuff. You want to have them up at, at a particular layer, right? So that segmentation, it helps also for security. So once something happens to one layer, it doesn't, get, doesn't affect the other segment. So, and you're also going to look at broker's domain. So you want to limit the size because if you don't limit the size, you might have issues you might have traffic issues. Then also layer three network segmentation. So this is where subnetting comes in. This is in the scope of CCNA two, uh, CCNA three. Uh, so uh, Southtech, uh, Clark Archie Technology Limited is also a Cisco partner. So uh, if you are interested in network security, so these are very important concepts. But for your Security Plus exam, you want to understand this concept with respect to security. Like I said earlier on. What are the components of each of those layers and what are the vulnerabilities in each of the layers and what are uh, the countermeasures you should have for each of the layers? And of course, for IP protocol, you want to know, understand that there are uh, um, IP version 4 and IP version 6. This is, um, if, uh, 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 this is an older version. This is a newer version. Um, then you have network prefix and subnet marks. So network prefix is going to be something like this. This is 10.1.128. And uh, that is this uh, network prefix. So the zero there is the maybe for this particular server, then dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five is like the full uh uh what's it called? The network IP address. Then you want to understand the concept of virtual lands. Uh so a LAN is just a local area network. If you have this switch, right? And it has, let's say 16 ports. That's, that's the, and you have 16 systems maybe connected to it. So the question is, if I have uh, this 16 port switch and I want to kind of um, not necessarily uh, connect each of them physically here i want to virtually construct this segmentation so i do a vlan so i do a virtual lan so you just get into the switch and you configure the switch to have maybe marketing staff from port one that is uh port one to let's say port five you want to have a uh, technical staff from port six to like port seven so when you when you do that kind of configuration within the switch right for better management, for security, for segmentation, you call that a virtual LAN, okay? So this makes logical topology independent of port location on physical switches. Okay, so security zone. So very, very important concept. So you want to make sure that within your network to better provide a secure system, you want to have different layers of security. Uh, take, for instance, if you walk into the bank, some sections of the bank are going to have a, a lower security or a low privilege compared to some other layers of the network. Where you have a customer zone where maybe one or two systems is given to the customer, or you have a company that, that have consultants coming to maybe do one or two things, 
that layer can be a low privilege uh, uh, layer. Maybe it's where some staff can come in to do some things. You can have medium privilege. Then where you have some very uh, important assets in terms of digital assets, uh, domiciled, you want to have very high privilege. So in planning your network, you want to look at the things that are facing the public internet, the things uh, that are going to be high privilege, you want to deny traffic from some certain aspects to some other aspects. So this is going to help you provide good security. So segment containing hosts with same access control security requirements. So you want to understand, you want to decide which is going to be public, which is going to be private. Uh, what section are you going to be um, uh, securing? What do you want to prevent? What do you want to accept? So this is the concept of network segmentation and security zones. Then attack surfaces. In the previous model, we talked about attack surface, meaning that if you have multiple attack surfaces, attack surface meaning what are the different inroads into your enterprise? Some companies, it's their websites, it can be their network, it can be their employees, it can be... So in networking, here we're looking at what are different layers? Layer one or two, that's where you have your switches, that way you have your cables. If somebody goes, cuts a cable within your facility, you have an attack already, right? So that's layer one. Layer two, in layer three, that's where you have your router. Layer four to seven, that's where you have your session. That's where you have your presentation. That's where you have your application. So at the application layer, that's where you have browser. That's where you have softwares that are public facing. So how do you make sure that you secure most of this aspect. So there's a concept of defense in depth. So defense in depth have to do with you making sure that you have stratified layers of security. You don't just have one means of security. If you take for instance for a building, you have a gate that is one kilometer from the building. You have a second gate that is 500 meters from the building. You have a gate that is 100 meters from the building. You have an access control system that is 200 meters from the building. You have a swipe card system with a dog, with CCTV cameras, uh, 50 meters to the building. That kind of thing, you call it a layered security. So that's the concept of defense in depth. Now, what problems arise from weakness in the network uh, design architecture? So if you don't plan, if you don't design your network properly, that's why it can cost just $200 to set up a network and also cost $2,000 to set up a network. The difference between the two can also be that these first other systems have factored in most of this concept we are talking about. Whereas the other system just got router switches and just connected the devices, no segmentation, no security, no access control systems, nothing of such. So if you do that, some of the problems are going to be single point of failure. So if something happens, everything collapse. If you don't segment your network, so if everything is in one place, so if one section of the network goes bad, everything goes bad. That's what you call single point of failure. No backup, no, 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 no routing, no load balancing. You are not tunneling traffic. If something happens to somewhere else, all of the items on your network are in one broker's domain. So you're going to have single point of failure. Then you have complex dependencies. You have availability over confidentiality and integrity. So you just have a very available, easygoing network. But you're not closing up some things. People can change things. So you don't want that to happen. Then lack of documentation and change control. So you need to properly, both logical and physical topology, you need to properly, uh, what's it called? Something like this. You want to have a very thorough uh, topology design. And then you'll have also have over dependence on perimeter security. So that's what I talked earlier, talked about earlier on. Where you are de depending more on the security guy, the guard, you are dependent more on the dogs, on the CCTV cameras, but the the, the digital assets themselves, the switches and routers and the documents, they don't have access control systems. So if you but depend on your perimeter security, you're going to compromise your digital security. Then you have port security. So this is where you are looking at port filtering. You are looking at each and every one of those uh, uh, ports within your 
switches or within your routers, you want to make sure that you're only granting access to who needs to have access. So you could do port filtering, you could do port security with respect to port numbers, with respect to IP address, with respect to MAC address. Who should have access to who? So these are concepts in security. Then of course you want to do physical isolation, you want to update media devices, and you have single host or group host not connected to any other network. So you want to have, like I said, you have that in most banks where you just have one system, it's just isolated, it has its own internet, has its own whatever, and they, they tell you, okay, you want to do your internet banking, you want to do conf some something, or you want to get some mail, or you want to send some files, and you don't have access to internet on your phone, or your desktop, or your laptop, or your device, and whatever. you could go use that particular system. Same thing with phones, because you could go use that particular phone. That can be properly isolated from the entire infrastructure in the, uh, the, uh, the network. So another thing you're going to also look at is cost. Cost is very crucial because if you, like I give the example about $200 and $2,000, cost can be a very, very important thing to look at when you are planning your architecture and how you're going to maintain. Then you want to look at workloads, you want to look at ease of deployment. These are very important concepts. Because this is going to this is going to tell if you are going to have um a, a very sustainable network availability resilience power patch availability risk transference where you want to do insurance or you want to transfer to third party these are very important considerations. Okay, so we've looked at architecture and infrastructure concept. We've looked at network um, infrastructure. We've looked at switching and routing. That's layer two and three. We looked at security zones, we looked at um, a port security, we looked at architecture consideration. Then let's look at some appliances. So you want to plan your network security, especially for an enterprise. So you want to actually uh, make sure you select the effective controls for your system. So enforce segmentation, apply access control, monitor traffic. Do zone border, do within border, do endpoint control. So outside your enterprise, that is the fence, the CCTV camera, the guard guys, the dogs, all of those kind of things. I would like you to watch a video about how, how Google protects its data center. Same thing with Amazon. It's, it's what we call defense in depth. Each layer, just go to YouTube or go to Google and type uh, Google data center security or Google data, data uh, physical security video. So you're going to see a short video of this around six, seven minutes. And to tell you the different layers of security that uh, a good enterprise should have. So that's what you call zone border. Then within border, it's mostly within, within, close to the building. And this one have to do with the devices themselves. Uh, so you have device attributes, so active, passive, you have inline, you have fail open, then you have fail closed. Very important concept you want to understand for your exam. So how do you place the devices? For instance, this one, it can be passive. It can also be active. For instance, your firewall, you have a tap device, you have the switch, uh, you have your client. So you see, these are different layers. And this can also perform the function of an intrusion detection system or a function of an uh, intrusion uh prevention system, either detection or prevention, right? So firewalls are very crucial. So you want to implement firewalls. Um, you can be using software-based firewall or you can be using hardware-based firewall. And you can be doing firewall based on certain parameters. It can be based on source and destination IP. It can be based on the ports. It can be the, uh, the protocol, I mean. It can be based on the source and destination of port numbers. You can be based on saying, okay, I want to accept this or I want to reject this. It can be, okay, based on what is coming into the network or what is going out of the network or both. So these are parameters you can use to actually check to say, okay, if I'm configuring my software base or my hardware base appliance, how do I do that, right? So placement and attributes also you talked about, we talk about uh, we're going to talk about routed, bridge, inline placement, firewall appliance versus router firewall. So these are important concepts you need to consider when planning your enterprise 
architecture. Then here we have layer four and layer seven firewalls. Uh, so uh, stateful inspection validates connection. So it checks and makes sure that you have connection. Then uh, for layer four, there must be TCP handshake. Uh, then for layer seven, it checks the protocol and look at the signature, especially for uh, secure shell uh, connections, right? And some of them can be application specific filtering. You can be saying, you can say, okay, I'm trying to filter for a particular application. At times you can see this in some routers where they are telling you, you could block out and say, okay, I don't want to so, 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 uh, uh, URL to be visited. So that's application or URL specific uh, 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 firewall or filtering. I remember a, a, a friend was telling me about him deploying a software for a hospital and found that okay, the hospital was not using the software. They were spending most time using Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and wherever. And one day when he went to do maintenance, he just blocked out Facebook, Instagram on the router. And somehow everybody's asking, oh, we cannot browse Facebook. Of course, what should we be doing with Facebook when you should be using the software and provide data on the software to for better iteration on the deployment of the software? So that's what you have. That's what you call application specific. So, or you can be blocking a particular... Uh, let's say Microsoft service, or you can be blocking, let's say Chrome or Firefox. So that's specific to that particular application. Then you also have a uh, proxy, then you have reverse proxy, same concepts, right? Now let's talk about IDS IPS. So the major difference between these is, uh, is also to understand that for IDS, it's detection system, then IPS is going to actually make it not happen. So they're going to either block or they're going to reset or they're going to redirect, right? So you want to know the, these differences. So next generation firewall. So you can have application where filtering, that's what we talked about, that is based on the application, based on the software. It can be user account based filtering, it can be IPS, um, it can be cloud inspection. Then you also have this concept of UTMs, Unified Threat Management, where you have a, a, an enterprise software that is going to be doing all of these things all in one place. So it's going to have both firewall, data loss prevention, VPN, and they're very expensive. So load balancers, what load balancers are going to do is going to say, if I have a lot of traffic coming into my network, right? Or rather, if I have a lot of traffic coming to um, my network, can I share the load? Can I balance it up? Can I kind of um, uh, take 20% or 50% or 30% and distribute to different sections of my server? So this is going to help you for assurance. This is going to help you for quality of service, QoS. So you, you can do that at layer four and layer seven. So there are several things you want to, parameters you want to use to check that. It can be round robin, it can be fewest existing connection, it can be the weight, it can be kind of uh, based on 30%, 40%, 20%. It can be, okay, heartbeat health checks based on the availability of each of the servers. That's what will tell how much traffic you're going to send to them. So this concept is also very uh, um, uh, applicable to cloud computing. So if you have interest in uh, AWS, uh, Azure, or uh, GCP, so these are very important concepts when you're trying to make sure that when traffic comes into your network on your, uh, your digital assets, you want to do that distribution because that distribution gives you better quality of, uh, of service. So you have web application firewall. So I think this is a window system. Uh, so you can be able to inspect code in HTTP packets. You could check for malicious code. You could implement it as a software or hardware. So we've looked at device placement for your IPS, IDS, firewall, tap devices, your all of those things, where do you, place them, how do you place them, what are kind of controls you want to implement. We've looked at device attributes, we've looked at firewalls, looked at proxy servers, 
IDS on IPS, load balancers, UTMs that, are, that integrate everything and have it in one suite, then web application firewalls. Let's look at VPN, virtual private network. So virtual private networks are just a way to say, okay, I want to connect between two networks, but I don't want to go through the, the internet. I don't want to just go like every other person. I want to have a kind of a secure tunnel through which I'm going to send my packets. And that's what you call a VPN. So this is a VPN client. This is a subnet. This is a local network. So anytime I create a channel and I say, okay, I want to send everything into it. So you call this a VPN gateway. So it's going to authenticate the users and create secure encrypted tunnel. Right, so that's what a VPN does for you. So you have uh, VPNs that are a lot of them are software based, uh, and they can help you tunnel traffic into wherever you're heading to. Okay, same concept. Okay, uh, TLS. TLS is mostly applied over um, web web tools uh, for especially when you want to. Uh, send packets over the internet. Uh, so you can use TLS to negotiate a secure connection. Uh, machine authenticates by PKA, that's public key infrastructure certificates. Uh, once it's approved, then it's authenticated, then you have access. So for TLS, you could use TCP or UDP. So this is what we call the connection-based protocol, TCP. Right, and this is what they call the connectionless based protocol, uh, port 53. IP security. So we also don't want just want to have our security this that way. We want to have IPsec. So most of the times VPN uses IPsec. Key exchange, right? So you have establishment of security association between pairs, between two systems. Uh, phase one provides authentication, so it can be end of this two. The phase two establishes cipher suits. Then uh, IKE version one support host to host and um, and site to site tunneling, and version two adds better support for client to site remote uh, access. Okay, so remote desktop computing. So this is a very important concept. Windows have had this, and most operating systems have had this for a very long time. But these days you're seeing uh, it very common now where you have tools like uh, Zoom, like uh, Skype. I remember <laughs> it used to be very, very fun doing Yahoo Messenger. Uh, you now had it on Skype, of course, before even the days of, before Zoom and Team, Team and Google Meet came out and the rest. So all of these tools, uses either desktop-based application or web-based application, connect to the internet gateway into an internet network to do what? Via browsers to kind of present um, files or to do viewing. It can be video, it can be voice, it can be any of such. So most of the times you have a GUI-based remote terminal software. So what's secure shell? So anytime you want to connect to a server and you don't want to do that using just a unsecured protocol, you can use secure shell. So secure shell, make sure that you have encryption. Off-band management, right? So you want to have secure admin workstation. That's what you call SAW. Then, or out-of-band management. So you have a serial, a model, a console port. You have a virtual terminal. Then you have a separate cabling of VLAN uh, um, um, isolation. So in out of band management, you're trying to say, okay, you want to have something very uh, close knitted, uh, a little bit uh, different from the infrastructure that every other item in your network is using. Okay, so if we're to go to review now, some of the most important concepts is uh, remote architecture. Uh, TLS, IPsec, K-Exchange, Remote Desktop, Secure and of course, the last concept we talked about, out-of-band management. Okay, for lab activity, uh, later on, we can work on in the, in the remote section or in the uh, mentorship group. We can look at setting up remote access. You could use the Windows system to do that, or you could use any um, 
remote desktop computing tool to run that. Then of course, IPsec tunneling, uh, you could use um, any VPN suite to be able to run that. Okay, thank you very much for going through the series. I'll see you in part six.